uh, yeah, no, um, to get the momentum, to get the momentum, because uh, again, like, if you're one of those persons that plans things forever, you might be propositive, but you never play, you never start something, no? Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, it can also the idea can also get too big in your head. You know, you, you get yeah. to this point where where you like you want to plan and you start something, and then in your head you go like, okay, it needs to be on this level, and I need to get that caliber of person, mm -hmm. and I need this equipment, and I need this kind of venue, yeah. and then before you know it, the whole thing is is blown out of proportion. And, um, and then you get overwhelmed with even starting because you just go like, fuck, I'm never going to get to that level. You know? Yeah, sure. And I, I think it's, there's a, there was a saying that um, you shouldn't let um, perfection get in the way of productivity. Yeah. So you should start, even if it's not perfect. Yeah. So as a disclaimer, this is probably not going to be perfect. It's probably going to be shit in the beginning, but it's going to get better and better, hopefully. And... Uh, and it should provide some entertainment at the very least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's the, it's the right approach. Like when, when you start some stuff, you want to start them casual AF, you know? Like if you think of like even Casey Neistat, like he, ha he has, of course, he has strong background, so he knows what to do, but he does it so casual. Like he, wanna make a, he wants to make a title. He just pay, takes a piece of paper and he writes it with a mark, writes something with a marker. Yes. And uh, it's basic, but it works. Yes. And then he has all the knowledge of how to, anyway, pack everything in the best way and how to make the cinematography and so on. But I think what you're talking about is also like, if you want to make perfection and you want to do it alone, that might be an obstacle as well. Like, you might pretend to know about the lights, you might pretend to know about the subject, of course, and yeah. about the, the competitors and so on, or rather you want to rely on some other people that are keen to support you. Yeah. I think that's the most fascinating thing when you can drive other people and share your enthusiasm. Like now today you have Klaus here supporting you, and, and I think this, this also helped you to, to speed up this and to get it started straight on, and then yeah, you yeah. see how it evolves. Yeah, I, th I think um, the... Um, just sorry, just on the on the subject of Casey Neistat specifically, all of that stuff that he does now that we think like, oh fuck, he's just doing this so casual and yeah. he's do, like creating his own style. He all of that shit he's done out of necessity because he wasn't, he didn't go to film film school. Yeah, he didn't yeah. know how to create these flashy titles okay. or animations or whatever the case is. And that aesthetic that he's developed has all been born out of his. Um, limitations as a yeah. as a proper film made its style no he made his style yeah and then and then you know i guess i guess that contrasted a lot with with um things that were super polished and then people people like latched onto that and yeah, tried to yeah. uh, replicate that. and there is so much competition in the super polished but there is probably no competition in the super row. Well, now but now it's like everybody's ripping now everybody's trying to do his thing yeah. And and try and and it's and it's now going the other way again. I mean, yeah. yeah at least from what I've seen. So what is he doing now? I think he stopped with the vlogs, and now he's doing more serious. I mean, serious more. Seri uh, I, he still, he's still. I, I, I don't know. I haven't looked recently, but uh -huh. he's still doing some of that stuff. Um, but he hasn't become so obsessive with it because he had, when he started that, he was doing it every every single day uh -huh. like he, that was his thing he wanted to do yeah. he wanted to create uh, an entertaining piece of content uh every single day for yeah, yeah. you know and he and he basically i don't know how long he kept it up for but it was it was definitely a year it might have been yeah like i think a couple 600 of years. videos or 700 videos something so, like that so, so a call it years. so call it two years yeah. but the thing is that that obviously not surprisingly came at the cost of um I think he came to close to getting divorced really? multiple times. Yeah, because it was just like, Showing you know, he said, much. yeah, and it wasn't just show too much, yeah. but he said like it, it kind of warped his whole perspective of reality because he's sitting there saying something antagonizing to his wife and he hang and he and uh, and then he's got like the camera in the background yeah. Yeah, yeah, waiting yeah. for her to fucking react yeah, yeah. badly. And yeah. then it's like a great piece for the for the vlog. Yeah, you but know? that's what's funny to me to see that he makes he wants to make this sh cinematography shot, so he wants to leave the camera there and show when he arrives and he parks the bicycle or something like that. But in reality, he went there, he placed the camera, he went back, and then he arrived again recording. So all of that, it's 
It's it is fake indeed. It's but it's totally fake. But yeah, the thing is, but, but it engages. Yeah, it definitely engages, and also yeah. you don't. It's something like yeah, you would yeah. you would not think about in the first uh, in the no, first no, stage. No, no. It, I think it still almost works. I think it can still work also in shorter formats like Instagram Stories and stuff like that. But I think these kind of projects that you have every day they give you a certain momentum as well. Like I, I tried something like that, very very tiny. I did this like time lapse from my window yes. for a, for an year. So every day before going to to work, to take the train for Wolfsburg, I always took a picture from the exact same position, yes. the world city, always at 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. So I did it for an year as well, something more than a year. And somehow it gives you, it gives you this uh, constancy and uh, you, you really feel the days passing by and you don't take them for granted. Like sometimes you, if you don't have such, uh, such commitments every yeah. day, you might lose a couple of days, uh, they pass behind and you yes. don't notice that. But yeah, this yeah. instead gives you a certain, uh, how to say, certain regular lifestyle, like certain, what do you say in English? So help a, me out. A rhythm, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, perspective. discipline, discipline. Uh, oh, discipline, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does, for sure. But um, on the subject of Wolfsburg, like, why don't you just fucking live in Wolfsburg? <laughs> I mean, doesn't should, it shouldn't sound very respectful to the people living there, but it's not a creative place okay. to, my, uh, to my understanding. I mean, you come to Berlin and the moment you come to Berlin, it might feel shocking. First year might feel shocking, but then you realize that things happen in Berlin and you also start opening your mind to a multicultural environment, a weird environment, and you start opening your mind to accept everything that surrounds you and eventually feel inspired by. But Wolfsburg is a bit, uh, to, to my understanding, to what I've seen, I've never been living there. It feels more like this uh, country life, uh, country, country life uh, lifestyle, you know, countryside lifestyle. And, um, you know, it feels like y you just go to work, get a nice car, pimp the car, pimp yourself at the gym. And uh, that's, that's very similar to my hometown, actually. My hometown yeah. is, is uh, as well like 60,000 citizens, more or less. And, uh, and that's all you do. You want to get a fancy car or a fancy bike even before you can drive a car. You want to pimp it out. This is representing you, which is good. I mean, it's good that at least on the countryside we preserve this fascination of your own vehicle to portray it yourself. But on the other hand, you don't want to just think about the cars. You don't want to just be surrounded by cars from the same brand. So you want to go out in a place which is full of colors, full of shapes, full of cultures, full of people and full of things happening that you don't even expect. Like every day I, can, I have the, the chance to go out in Berlin. I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I just go out eventually with a friend of mine and, and we don't know what's gonna happen. And sometimes we go back the day after, or a couple of days after and we arrive at home and we're like, oh wow, this we couldn't have never imagined. We, we should write a book about it. Yes, yeah, 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 no, I get it. So you saw, but it's, and it's still worth traveling the, how long, is, how totally. long does it take? It's like an hour, six minutes, that's what the train company says, but it's not really true. So in the end, okay, it's but like... Door to door, door, to door, door, is, to like door is like three hours per day. You okay, lose on an a hour and a half one way. Okay. Yeah, I would say okay. so. Which means basically, you, that's my approach. I sleep three hours on the train and I sleep three hours less at home. <laughs> okay. Which okay. is fair enough. I mean, okay. the train is safe. You don't have to drive the train, you can sleep. You don't have to go by car. It's you good. don't have to drive the train. You don't have to drive the train. Okay, okay. So, very good. But, and, and you don't do work on the train at all, no? Sometimes, if it happens. I mean, it's, it's clever when, you know, you know to, if, if you might have some um, good amount of work to start up, you don't want to lose the first hours of the day because then people are going to wait for you, for your input. So you might, you, you want to arrive prepared in the, okay. the, from the first minute you know what to give to everybody. Yes. And, uh, and that might help you. If you didn't do the homework the night before, you have to do it on the train before you arrive in the studio. Okay. But it's rare. I mean, it's rare that uh, you don't do the homework. But and and are you watching like podcasts and stuff like that on the train or watching podcasts? No, no, podcasts no. The, the train, I'm like, boom, snap, Z gone. Okay, downtime. Like yeah. I take a seat and gone. Okay. A colleague of mine, she has a couple of pictures of me sitting next to her and just sleeping, completely gone. Okay. But by a strange fact, I, as soon as we arrive, we I just wake up. I never missed it. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, actually, I missed it once. Uh, <laughs> I was in and Hanover. What, where, where'd you? And you woke up in Hanover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, Jesus. it happens one and it teaches me to, to oh, take it You know what? That happened to me as well. It happened to me yeah. once as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I only did it for six months. So yeah. But that's why now quarantine, it's, it's the greatest time ever. I mean, I'm living the dream because I'm doing the same job 
but from home or from the, some couple of offices here in Berlin. And, uh, and that's just amazing. I mean, you, you don't have to wake up so early. Yes. You don't have to take the train. You don't have to deal with the delays of that. You don't have to leave and, your environment. And, and to be honest, even if I would have been living in Wolfsburg, the switch to, li to work from home just makes everything more spontaneous. Yes, I mean, I'm, I have no problems to be spontaneous in the studio, but when you're at home with your own music, with your own pace, you can cook your own food, it just feels so natural. Yeah. And it also inspiring. I mean, in my case, I, when I have a break, I just go in the balcony, I look at the city, I look far away. That's good for my eyes also. Because nowadays our life is almost limited to this 15 inches. Yes. That's all we wear, yeah. where you go. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a pity, but our, our job is limited as well. 15, 21, whatever you have. But yeah. that's where you live. You live in this box. Yes. That's where you create. Yes. This is why maybe when you create a car and it finally comes to, to reality, no matter if you sketched it or modeled it, the fact that it's so big and you can touch it and you can feel it eventually sit inside, it shocks you still. I don't know, if I don't have babies, I can imagine it's yeah, a yeah. Hard, weird comparison, but yeah. I think it's, uh, it's shocking that from 15 inches it moves there. Yes. And, uh, but because of that, you, of course, you might uh, get tired, tiring your eyes. Yes. So when I get to the balcony, I look outside, I see the walled city. Uh, you've never been at my place, you should come over. No, I've seen a lot of pictures. I've, well, I've seen pictures of the views, because you look out, yeah. of, uh, out of your balcony onto trees, yeah. right? Yeah, you see oh, the walls. Is it Tiergarten? Or? Yeah, it's a, it's a district called Hansa Viertel. Uh, yes. It was built in the, in the 50s. It was a bit of a competition between architects, thank you. And um, so every building is built by different architects, and they wanted to show off a bit what, uh, what the west side of the city could have built in this sort of tiny, utopical district. And uh, the beautiful thing is that all of that is protect. So differently from the rest of the city, they cannot build anything in front of you over there. So that will stay like that for sure? That will stay like that, okay. which doesn't look so beautiful from outside, I have to admit. Okay. And the flat is also very tiny, I have to admit. Okay. But the space for your eyes and the space for your mind is unlimited. Yes. Because when you get this view, like, I don't know, like, it's just inspiring, you know, yes, it's just yeah, yeah. peaceful. But did you, going back to Italy, huh. did you ever consider staying in Italy or did you want to get out? No, I, I, when I moved to Berlin, I didn't even know where Berlin was on the map. Okay. So okay. Th that's weird. I so mean, it was I, a I was case of like, completely. I've got this opportunity uh, in Wolfsburg and yeah. so that was, that was the, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move. This was, of course, like uh, the, uh, I mean, they tell you, you want to work for Bugatti? You say, yes, you don't even know where it is. Okay. I actually thought it was somewhere around Modena. I thought it was still, <laughs> like, Campo, I, I thought it was still like Campo Galliano back okay. in the days. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know it was in Wolfsburg. Yes. But um, yeah, so I, I was studying in Torino. Yes. Uh, this was like till 2013. And then 2013, like I, I took the degree on Saturday. I took the flight on Sunday. And Monday I was in Wolfsburg very early in the morning because on, on that period there were floods. So we had to like take the train at four in the morning to be in Wolfsburg uh, at a decent time, like nine. So, oh, wow. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I started working very, very exciting. Uh, it was very exciting. And then just like a week after I checked on the map, wh wh where am I? Where is oh, Berlin? So you, you just didn't even know? I didn't, I thought like Berlin is the capital, might be in the middle. Okay. No, it, we were all the way on the corner. But, but, but did it? But but was it I was mean, it quite obvious? Like from the start, okay, cool. I'm gonna Berlin's like an hour yeah. and a half away. I'm gonna stay in Berlin. Yeah, this I, I, I will always be thankful to 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 my previous boss who pre proposed me that straight on. Oh, okay. Because he okay. said, look, you you can work for me. This is my proposal, and the studio's in Wolfsburg, and you can work in you can live in Berlin like the rest of the team, and you can commute daily, and I take care of it. Okay. And so he proposed that. And I have to say, when, whenever this man proposed me something, he always proposed me something that I won't have chosen by my own, but I won't have worked out done by my own, but it always was the right choice. Okay. But, yeah. And how did you make that connection? Um, so I, I did study in this uh, private university in uh, Torino. There is a couple of universities about car design, yes. uh, Yad and Yad. Yes. Uh, so I was at Yad and um, what? What? Yad, uh, IED. Ah, okay. We call okay. it Yad yeah, in Italian. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's uh, like European Institute of okay. Design. Okay. And um, so 2013. And, and the other one is what? 
Yeah, so Instituto I-A-D. Arte Aplicata in Design, Dude, like that's that. why I always get so fucking confused because they, they, they the, yeah, the they, name is so similar. Yeah, they might uh, get profit, one of the... Uh, For sure. Of but do they, they've entities. got, there's no connection? No, 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 they are two separate Separate entities. entities. And okay. you know, as car design schools work, like sometimes one is better, sometimes the other one is better. Back in the days, I have to say, I, I was very lucky because uh, in the, the period I've been studying, there was the, the moment I took my degree was the last year in which we had a director, which was uh, Cesar Mendoza. Yes. And he was really a great director, committed on the World Institute, of course, but especially on to transportation design. Okay. Because, you know, we're, we're in Torino. Torino is okay. the capital of, of uh, automotive industry for, yes. uh, for Italy. And uh, so somehow, thanks to him or thanks to the contact of the school itself, uh, at one point they just called me up from this job placement de- department and they say, look, uh, there is a possibility to make an interview for Bugatti, you want to do it, of course. But the, sorry, this job interview department, is it part like the university? It's part of the university, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, she just say, look, there is this possibility, uh, they're looking for somebody experienced, but we have also you and another couple of uh, students still actually studying that we would like to uh, let try at least, so you can have another experience mm-hmm. as an interview. Uh, so, you know, Bugatti sounds loud, you never think of working for Bugatti when you're a student. Yeah, no, at least sure that, back in the days, yeah. we, we were humble enough to don't even imagine that we could have jumped to Bugatti. <laughs> I mean, already thinking we, you could work for Mercedes, deciding to work for Mercedes was already at there. And it didn't work. Like I, I think I applied to Mercedes like three, four times okay. and they never took it. But uh, somehow, yeah, we do the interview for Bugatti and uh, humble again, just show what you got. And uh, between what I got in the end, I also remember I, uh, I didn't have any Bugatti project because uh, this was from one day to another. So I couldn't just um, prepare something. And I, to be honest, I don't think it would have helped that much. But I had a book, which is uh, Divina Bugatti. It, calls, it speaks about the Bugatti in Campo Galliano, so the Bugatti of the 90s, this era in which Bugatti was in Italy, was built in Italy. And I, you know, I just finished the interview and I said, look, I don't have anything from Bugatti here to show you, but you know, I have a link to Bugatti, like uh, something I'm uh, affectionate to. And I shown them that book and the guy was very interested in the book. He didn't see it before. And uh, I don't know if the book helped somehow, but it was uh, just a way but to you show were, But you were a fan before. Yeah, that's the point. I mean, back in the days when you're a student, you're a fan of every supercar company, let's be honest. And Bugatti, especially back in the days, was so far from the public, let's say, from the humble public, was something for for the elite. That also, if you want to be a fan of it, it's quite hard to find material about it. It's quite hard to find pictures of the cars. And we didn't much have Instagram and stuff like that back in the days, mostly Facebook, I think. And uh, so it was hard to imagine about Bugatti because you couldn't access even about Bugatti. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I've seen the picture of the Veyron. It was, was to me something exotic because I never heard about it. And then one guy all of a sudden shows me a Veyron in the desert. I think, yeah, I think I also, the, the first time I saw that was on, uh, was on Top Gear. Because mm-hmm. I, like, w- w- when I finished, I finished in 2009 yeah. and they like, okay, it started getting better towards the end, but even then there was not really a lot of material out there. And when, when I, f- definitely when I, I started in 2005 and there was, there was nothing like car design news was, it was little more than a forum basically, yeah, yeah. you know, it was like Reddit, you know, without pictures pretty much. And, and there were all these people talking about different things and you're just like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, and you, and you don't know who anybody is. So you don't know yeah. what's true, what's not. And, and um, there was like, there was, there was very little information, like very little information at that time. And I didn't know anybody in the business. So it, it, uh, with, regards to, with regards to that car specifically, I think the first time I saw it was probably on Top Gear or in, a, in a Top Gear magazine, for example. Yeah. Oh, it's true. I mean, back in the days, uh, every every figure from the automotive industry was was a name that you heard, but you don't know what's his face. Nowadays, with Instagram, it's so easy. Like, you want to apply to a company as a student. That's where they look. You you go on the official website, you apply. Oh. You might get a negative reply at one point because that's the truth. And you just find the director on Instagram. You put a couple likes. You send a message, hopefully a very nice message, and. And he's gonna be kind and reply to you, and you get in contact like that. But how many pe- how many people were in your year at university? 
uh, I don't know, I think about 40 in the last year. 40? Yeah, there and, is and tons do you th of... Did everybody apply for it or um, was it... What, did, did, the, did the school actually say, like, Aldo, I think you'll be yeah, quite yeah, good no, for that, this? In this specific case, that's, well, that's what the school did. They picked a couple of students okay. from, uh, from the still studying ones. So they filtered And then out others the that already took their degree. But still, then, of course, I mean, they could have picked nobody as well. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, there is tons of car design wannabe that come out of every school every year. And uh, I think that's, that's an issue that pe the schools don't make them aware of that. They sell them the dream, but they don't really make them understand that you might become a designer or you might become a modeler or you might get into visualization or you might get into clay. So there is many shades and many roles to build the, the car, to build the product. Or you might even don't make cars. You yes. would like, rather make yachts or bikes or airplanes or products themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the schools don't really make aware that the, the students, they rather sell them the dream, which is good until a certain level. But then what you create is that they might or might not have a sense of responsibility to work hard. They might take for granted, ah, okay, I study there, it's a private school, I spend a lot of money, I'm gonna get the job. And then out of 40 people uh, from every school every year, maybe five get a job. If that, yeah. It's, but dude, it, that, it's, it's, it's so true. They, they um, I, I had to think long and hard before like committing to go and, and study because in, I was in the UK at the time and there's no, I mean, you can get a student loan. Mm -hmm. You can, um, and I, again, I was lucky because the last year that I studied, they, the fees were still very reasonable. And, uh, and then the year after that, it doubled. Yeah. And then a, I think a couple of years after that, it doubled again. And now it's ridiculous. I think it's like 10 grand a year for the same yeah, course, yeah, which international students at the time were paying less than that. And even, even then, you still got... Um, living expenses and all that shit on top of it. Which is much more. Actually, so, yeah. so like, I, like I had to really try and with the limited information and uh, um, resources I had, and I didn't know anybody in the business. Yeah. But from what I understood, it was fucking competitive. So I, again, I was also probably young and stupid, but um, I also had the, the mindset of like, okay, well, you know, I'm just going to have to work harder than what I've ever worked before. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it, it blew my mind, like when we got halfway through the course and there was like a, a bunch of kids in the school that were just like, oh yeah, I'm just finishing this to get a degree. Yeah. And I'm like, and then, uh, and, then, and then what? Like, what are you going to do with that? It's probably yeah. like, it's probably one of the most useless degrees you can get. I mean, if you don't go into that field, you know, it's not like you're going to do that and then somebody's going to say, okay, you know what, I think we can go into accounting with this, you know. Yeah. They, but this was a very like old school mentality of like, just get a degree, it doesn't matter what it is. And like a lot of the kids in my school, like not university, but high school, were in that frame of mind of like, I'm going um, to, it's, I need to start applying for, I like this university and I'm going to go there. And if I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a generic business degree, you mm -hmm. know. And I knew at that point already that it's a fucking mistake. And my academic skills at that sc stage were horrific. Like I just scraped through school. So I was like, fuck this shit. I'm, I'm leaving. I, me and a bunch of friends went over to London. Mm. And half of the kids that followed through with that uh, pressure that society was putting on them or that their mother or whatever was putting onto yeah, them, yeah. they were like, they went through with it and half of them dropped out. The other half fucking graduated, but then they were like, oh, I'm, like, I'm 21 now and I've got this fancy piece of paper, but yeah. I still don't know what I want to do. Yeah. And it's like, what's the fucking point? I also didn't have the means or the, the resources to just go and have that luxury of, of partying and, and mom and dad are going to yeah, take care yeah. of everything. So. Yeah, 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 but the piece of paper means nothing. And yeah. even getting your first job means nothing. Because the moment you enter a studio, you probably realize that you're nothing compared to your colleagues. And hopefully your colleagues are great, and hopefully you're very bad, and hopefully your first six months are going to be like, like a desperate chase of keeping your position. 
or at least that's that's the impression I had. Like I, I moved there inside, and after a couple of weeks already, the director comes to me and is like, "Look, your level is not acceptable for me." So oh, then, so he was straight up. With yeah, you, yeah, he went straight up because it's true. Like it doesn't matter if he takes you for a sort of internship or a sort of testing period, whatever it is, he got you, and he expects some fresh air coming from the school or he expects at least some skills that might support his project and maybe when you get into a tiny studio you can play this more if you have a certain rainbow of skills to play maybe you can become helpful and so he came and he was like it was straight on like look you're not good you're not good at all either you reinvent yourself in the next few days uh, whatever or you just we're just gonna find uh, someone else so I, I really remember that summer was like, Berlin was like so hot, maybe the only hot summer in Berlin. And commuting, go back home, work, weekend work. Now work, how much my work could have helped them? Not that much, but still try to grow. That's, so that's the, the point, no? See your colleagues, see what they do, try to reach them, no? I mean, try to, to get inspired at least. But the set of skill is really what saves you up. So, or at least saved me up. So when I came out of, my university, I, I tried to, out of that university, just three years, I tried to learn a bit of everything, let's say. So I tried to learn a bit of Photoshop, a bit of Alias, a bit of rendering, at the time Keyshot, uh, and so on, no? So not just, I wanna be an exterior designer, no. I don't think you can be that arrogant. And so I was like, okay, I tried to learn as much as I can from this university. Can I just, can I jump sure, in there a second? Sure, But I, okay. I had the same, exactly the same mindset as you, yeah. because that's what we were being taught. I was a lot more humble with the situation because yeah. I was like, I want to get my foot in regardless yeah, good. You have of, to be of whatever. And, and, and I want to, I just, I just, it's my dream to just get into a, a proper studio. Mm -hmm. And our, our school or the, the, some of the key tutors at that time yeah had this mindset as well of like, you should do a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of that, a bit of that. Yeah. And do you still agree? I don't. I, I don't okay. I think, I think now maybe, Yeah. but when I, if I look at what was in my portfolio by the time I finished school, it was very clear to me that, that if I look back on it now, yeah. I can't even look at it because it's so, it's pathetic, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's normal to have that outlook, but it's like, I, I got, uh, when I'd finished, mm -hmm. I had a bunch of projects. Some of them were pretty cool, but you need to also have an idea about what you want out of it at the end of the day. Yeah. So I was like, I would love to be an exterior designer, for example. Yeah, but. But yeah. I, I came out with a fucking shoe project. I came out with a tractor. I came out with this. I came out yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Because I also at the time was like, I don't think it's it's intelligent, um, intellectually um, uh, sufficient. If that's if it's yeah, 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 it's not very elegant. But I don't. I I didn't think it was um, substantial to just draw uh, coupes all the time or or a cab forward Lamborghini mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. style um, supercar. But the but the thing is, um, there is a skill in that. And there's a skill in, in, in mastering proportion and understanding how to put that volume together. Yeah. And I think it's, it is important to diversify, yeah. but you have to learn your craft and you have to master, I believe, again, it's my perspective, but I think that you should um, master one particular skill. Yeah. And once you've nailed that, or if it's not working, then move on to something else. Yeah, but this will happen. This will happen with the time. But how long is a car design degree taking usually? Like three years, maybe two years, yes. maximum five. Yes. So, and you're usually very young when you start that. Yes. Huh? So how much you can be sure that you want to be a specific kind of uh, player, like an exterior designer yes, or sure. whatever, uh, interior designer, and how much you know and you understand in, those, in this limited amount of time that you will be good at it? And how much you will be uh, granted that if you're good at it in your little garden of the university, you will still be comparatively good for the industry. Yeah, for sure. But I'm. But sorry. I'm. I'm. Okay. What 
my point of view is that I probably didn't focus enough on the craft mm -hmm. of learning how to fucking draw properly, for example. Yeah. And, uh, and then at the end, it was like um, we were doing like architectural projects and, uh, and yeah. um, uh, product stuff. And, and that's all great for thinking. And I like, I developed this kind of like um, this thing of like, I, I, I created this really clever product yeah. But nobody cares if it looks like shit. And that's true. Like you have to learn how to make something look good. Yeah. And there's a real fucking art in that. Yeah. And I felt um, inadequate um, by the end of it. And I also felt that um, I'd been failed by this environment that was supposed to be teaching me how to become a designer. You know, there's, there's a lot of... Like, like you say, they're selling a dream. They're selling this thing of like, if you come and study with us, we've got this great reputation and somebody's going to give you a job. Mm -hmm. That's fucking horseshit. You can go, you can go to, um, as you say, like, I mean, you, you went to a very, very prestigious school. You can go to that school, but if you don't have the goods on paper, yeah. then people don't care. And when I say paper, Absolutely. I don't mean degree. I mean, no, no, no. I mean the, the, the portfolio. The portfolio yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but I couldn't, but I, sorry, Alda, I, like, but I couldn't use, I also couldn't use alias at all, uh -huh. at all. I loved, I loved 3D. I really enjoyed the clay project, but uh -huh. um, we probably, again, I think we did, we did, I did a clay model for my final year and I thoroughly enjoyed that. But that was probably the most, we did a, a small little, a clay project um, yeah. separate to that in the second year but it's like I learned all these different things but like my skills were not ready at all yeah but again my skills were not ready at all as well that's the point like I don't believe that there is one student that comes out of university no matter if he's a, a genius and is gonna be ready for the business there is a difference from being creative and serve the business. Yes. The business is business. They need something, you do it. It probably is not going to be the fanciest thing. Yeah, but you like, need the skill to carry out whatever it is yeah, that they want. Yeah, you build the skill and you refine the and skill. And I didn't have, I didn't during have any the, of that. the time you work for the industry. Like, the school is never going to prepare you to be effective in the studio. Yeah. So they have to teach you what is, how the job is done. They have to be also a bit more realistic about that, I agree. But then you... you you really learn how to, to, to nurture your skills and apply them to what they might need in yeah. the real studio yeah, yeah. It, by the time you're in the studio. Yeah. Honestly said, I had these first six months especially in which I was not ready for that studio. Yeah. What saved me up was that back in the days we started doing renderings. We started playing with renderings because nobody in the university was teaching renderings yet. They were stopping at modeling, no, so alias. There were no visualization classes yet. But we played with, uh, with Keyshot back in the days, Keyshot 2. And uh, so the moment I moved at Bugatti, they said, hey, look, we are a relatively small studio. We don't have anybody capable of doing renderings, but we have a Mac with Keyshot. Can you use it? You can try. So most of my tasks, let's say 80, 90% of my tasks for the first months were, can you please do renderings of the new car? Can you please do renderings of the uh, configurations for color and trim and so on? So again, very humble task. And then I had this 10% of fun in which I could try to, to chase my okay. colleagues and okay. to propose some ideas and so on. Of course, pretty bad ideas mostly. But because it takes time to understand the studio, it takes time to understand the business, it takes time to understand the brand, it takes time to understand the vision for which the director is shooting at, and it takes time to understand also how you develop your skills and your understanding of cars, and like in terms of design and uh, how you would like to, to treat a form language rather than detailing, rather mm. than what's your, in your opinion, at least the next advanced step. All of that takes years and years. You don't come out from university with that. Eventually you come out from university with a fancy thesis that might somehow looks like the next step. But then again, I, I see students coming out today and they have this arrogance. They're like, look, I'm gonna be that. And if your dad can help you, maybe. But if you have son of nobody, I don't know how, how many are the possibilities that you wanna be that. You're gonna work as hard as you can 
and somebody in the industry is really going to recognize that you are one of the best worldwide. Because again, the schools are vomiting students every year. Every year there is a bunch of people who want to be the next whatever. Like, and, and you're not even going to get the next rock star. You're just mm. a man who thinks something, draws it, brings it together with, uh, with a strong team. And mm. then one day is in the reality. Mm. That's all you do. You bring things from your mind to the reality, mm. which is beautiful. I mean, mm. it gives your life a meaning, I have to say. Yeah. But I think um, the positive in all of this is that um, the business has become a lot more open-minded with um, regards to schools. Like they, they are not just picking from the Ivy League of car design schools anymore. Like true, your, true, your true. Ford time RCA. Uh, they can pick blah, you from blah, blah, Instagram blah. randomly. Yeah, and they, don't, yeah. And, and they don't give a shit. And the thing mm -hmm. is, the positive thing is that like you can go to some unknown entity and if you've got the skills then you you can get hired you know and that's a really positive thing which i think was maybe not true 10 years ago true it's a, it's a better time in theory because uh, you don't have the huge cost to deal with yeah not again not just the the payment for the university but the living cost if you have to move yes so and uh, yeah, you have the chance to, to pop out and to be visible to the, to the main players and, yes. and to propose yourself again kindly. You don't have to contact a director and be like, hey, bro, <laughs> you know, you would like to make one message and make yeah, it yeah, nice. Yeah, no, it should be done in the correct way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, for sure. This is, a, this is probably the right time that if it flattens the, 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 the starting point, let's yes. say, no matter wh where you come from. You can easily see online many sources, what's the level. So you should don't just limit yourself to see how your colleagues in your classroom are doing, but yes. you can really see, compare yourself worldwide. Yes. And you can also reach worldwide very easily. And yeah. people are kind online. I mean, you can really reach them on Instagram. And it's funny to say it's such a cheap app, but still it brings you to, to a network. Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, your access to... to um people is yeah. is so much so much better now isn't it absolutely absolutely and you link them to a face and they might follow you and see your updates and so on o on the other hand this misleads a lot because you might be an instagram star keeping publishing and publishing and all of that is fugazi like it's just fugazi. show off no yeah, if if people for a while are not publishing they're probably working on the real shit so and, it, and the real shit takes time to be nurtured and to yes. get reality. I, everything, you know, even this glass has some radiuses, has some hard edges, and uh, you want to fade to zero some stuff. It takes time. It's not just a sketch in one view. Yes. It has to work. It has to be nice. Yes. So, and this is the difference from maybe who's in the industry and who's just on Instagram. Yes. Because who's in the industry really needs to acknowledge all of the issues. And when it gets to a car, very complex issues. I don't know, impact crash test, whatever, uh, the seat heating plug and the voltage on the electric system. How we, can we take it off or not? Uh, yes, we can take off the airbag, but not the seat heating. Otherwise, we have to reboot the electric system. It, it is a cost we can't afford, all of that thing. On Instagram, it's just, look, this is what I think. This is my doodle. I hope it makes me enough advertising to get to the contact I need. I think this is a good way you can use it. Of course, it's limited. It might confuse who's doing what. But for the students and for who wants to, to, to join in the industry, it's uh, definitely a good place to, to shine a bit and to get the contacts. Yeah, I think, I think it also needs... Um, it's a difficult thing to articulate to young um, people starting out and um, about what it is that they actually want out of uh, their professional life. You know, it's like... As you said earlier on, there's so many different areas yeah. within the car design umbrella. You know, you can, you can, you've, I mean, the main headings are basically design, yeah. visualization. They're all and, needed. There is digital. not a more important and less important sure. one. Sure. But the thing is, like, there's all these different things. Yeah. And, um, and people, well, unless you've been in a studio, you wouldn't really know how those different departments are structured and, and how they all work together. Yeah. And it might be that like you really want to be uh, um, 
a, an exterior designer, for example, but maybe your maybe your sketching is not that great, so you end up um, becoming a digital modeler, or it might be that, um, as you said, you like you really like the the icing on the cake, the visualization end of the yeah. spectrum. I didn't even know about those different things. I mean, I knew yeah, cool. I, mean, I, I knew there was I knew there was um, obviously I knew there was design and then I knew there was modeling, but visualization was still pretty new at that at that time. There, um, there, it wasn't well known that there are people just applying materials and and uh, yeah. and images out of existing models, yeah. for example. It looked you know. magic, to be honest. I didn't know this was existing. All we did was applying shaders in alias and use this environment like in the mall at night. Yeah, and it was terrible, yeah. dude. Yeah. Pass me the glass. Please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Much yeah. respect. And, uh, yeah, to you too. And, uh, yeah, I mean, luckily, I, mean, I think a, a good school should inform about how is the stu our studio structure usually. And okay, the business is evolving, but uh, more or less those are the figures. Somebody's thinking, somebody's drawing, somebody's modeling, somebody's illustrating, and, and then uh, somebody's building it, no? This is also part that probably comes from other schools, from other origins, maybe mm. they're uh, crafting and artisans, right? but, but still, this part of what we do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, I think the school is, a, is a such a limited time and experience that it's fair enough if you want to understand a bit of everything. Because also when you work, it's, it's, it makes a huge difference if you know what your colleague is doing, even though he's, in my case, I design interiors and I need to work with modelers. But it makes a huge difference if I know how does their software work. If I don't know their software, like I know Alias, I don't know Maya, I, I want to learn Maya, I want to understand, at least I can speak the language to you when I give you an input. If I know how Alias works, I'm not going to tell you how to patch a geometry, but at least I can speak your language to give you an um, even more clear uh, input. Or if you're facing a difficulty, which is eventually modeling-wise a difficulty, I, I can understand it, hopefully. So I think if you have a a broad understanding of things. It helps you to relate to your team. Also visualization-wise, the basics, you should understand. So at least you know how your colleagues are working, what they are doing, and eventually if you want to explain them something, you, you know exactly how to explain it to them. Yeah, I cannot just come to you to like say you do visualization. I cannot just come with a picture and say, hey, do the same. I need to understand that might, you might need some textures, you might need some environment, you might need. Well, not everybody's that self-aware, Aldo. But that's that's no, but that's yeah, great. This makes the difference between, you know, yeah. between professionists. Uh, yeah, absolutely, dude. And I, it's great that you have that perspective. But like, I, I've, it's it's not it's not always the case. But it's it. I agree with you. I mean, I think maybe yeah, maybe I didn't uh, explain it um, that well. But I think that um, in an ideal world, yes, you have an understanding of everything. Yeah. But I think there's a lot to be said for um, learning your craft. And I think that um, at least the school that I went to, mm -hmm. which was supposed to be a very good school, they actually didn't fucking know what we should really be focusing on. Yeah. Like it was either a... a, a somebody that had been out the business for 30 years or somebody that um, has not been in the business, yeah. somebody that um, is an academic, <laughs> all of the above, you know, and, I, and, I, and, and um, I, you know, it's not to slander any of those guys off, but we were kept so in the dark because you, you've got all this different, I mean, information and by people that don't really know what the business is looking for that they need, yes, there were a select few that got to do internships. And that's where you really understand, okay, like I don't need to be a draftsman, you know. Mm -hmm. I need to, under, I need to uh, come up with a theme yep. and I need to learn how to develop that theme or at least articulate it and what, or, or if I can't develop it myself, what do I need to bring to the next guy to help him develop it, mm -hmm. you know. It's like you don't just get given like a, a half-hour sketch and then yeah. somebody says like, capture this feeling, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, there is people that support you and you can really go to them and say, capture this feeling and they make the magic. So it's beautiful when again, like somebody is in another position, like I talk from my perspective, if somebody is a modeler but has a strong design understanding, that's fantastic because those corners that you might give them an answer to solve, they will just solve themselves with their, sure. with their taste. Sure. This uh, uh, organic shape that you try to elaborate as if it's designed by a computer, but in reality it's styled, it follows some styling guidelines. Yes, I could try to draw it, you're trying to model it, but if you are the Maya modeler who, who has a strong taste, you, you probably nail it in and I will be inspired by you so again, the beauty of working in a team, especially when it's a strong team, a passionate team, a committed team, is that you trust your colleagues, you feel honored by them to working with them, and hopefully it's a combination. You don't really limit yourself to your specific uh, tool. So you might give them a base of alias, for example, they might give you back a, uh, an idea that you didn't think about, but it's a nice idea. So okay. it's good to be open, I think. But back to the schools, I think schools are made by the professors. Every year is different professors and those are really making the school. It's not about but the it, school. But do, do you guys have different like visiting, visiting professors every yeah, year? Yeah, we always change professors. professors for every class. Yes. So, yeah, still left. Sure. So, so yeah, we, we had a bunch of professors and of course you have get the, the, the star and you get uh, the, the guy who has just uh, uh, left the school and is already a professor, which is a bit weird sometimes. And uh, so yeah, you get a, a, a rainbow of professors again every year, like in my case, three years, different professors. Uh, different studios where they work, somebody's freelancing and so on, different attitudes to deal with. You already start learning that you have to deal with some foolish minds already at university, yeah. that's important to, to learn. Uh, but the professors make your preparation, makes your weapon to the moment you're gonna approach the, the business for real. And I have to be honest, back in the days, thanks to the directory first, but also thanks to the the set of professors, I think they gave me a, a decent enough preparation. At least I feel proud of what I learned. And I think I couldn't learn more uh, because, again, the time is limited. And I think I slept little enough at the time. So, But um, that, what does it mean? That every year a different university can be the best one. I don't think that there is really like uh, IED against uh, IAA, whatever, D, uh, is going to be uh, always one of the best. Probably one year one is the best, another year one is the best. Probably none of those are good anymore because nowadays if you're self-learned and you compare yourself to the community, you might even go further than somebody who's following a precise uh, path fr set from the school. And the piece of paper nobody asks you. I, I, I don't even know where is my piece of paper and in the end, you need to get the job done. Well, you will when the fucking finance sum asks you for shit like that because I had to, I had to present them with that. <laughs> really? And I lost my degree. To qualify yourself somehow. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, in Germany, it's like that. And I had, to, I had to phone up my university and get a reissue and pay for another certificate. Et but cetera, if you're a singer and you have an invoice as a singer and somebody paid that invoice, doesn't this qualify you enough? We're Germany. Germany. It's just Germany. There you go, yeah. Yeah, Germany is full of tricky things. It is, yeah. Like this church thing. I had to go to the, <laughs> to the, <laughs> what is it? The church the, tax. The, yeah, the church tax. I had to go to the tribunal to quit the church. What? Yeah, I had to take an appointment to the tribunal and quit. I, I did it quickly. And still they wanted me to pay for a month of church tax, which was a lot actually. And, uh, and the funny but thing did is you, that- did, Sorry, did you opt in at the start of that? No, not at all. But they assume that since you're Italian, you're Catholic. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I don't know if they assume that since you're another nationality. I don't know what, what they did. What did they assume you I were? I never paid any of that. I they mean, never they, assumed I, you're I, religious. I don't, I don't know. No, I guess not. No. Yeah. So the, tricky was, the trick was that they assumed I was Catholic. So on the paper also they made for me, I didn't speak German later. I do right now. Very okay. good. But still, on the paper they did for me at the, at the tribunal, I asked to them simply to say I'm not religious, but they still wrote, he's quitting the Catholic Church. He's quitting the Catholic yeah, Church. Yeah, which is beautiful. It's like I'm I never fucking joined yeah, in the Yeah, so place. Every, every foreign person coming to Germany, he's paying this uh, uh, 
<laughs> this beautiful tax. It's funny. It's, it reminds me of an Italian movie, like people just crossing a, a little border uh, like a couple of times because something was falling from their coach and every time like, hey, who are you? Where are you going? Juan Fiorino. And there's like a <laughs> couple of times you have to pay. And yeah. Cool. Right. Aldo, that was awesome, dude. No, oh, that was fun and yeah. that was, it passed away so fast. It so was awesome. So we, there is so, ton, so, so, so many things we can speak yeah, about. But this we was can, just an we intro, can, I think. Yeah, we can, we can revisit it again for sure, dude. I, like there, this won't be a one-off, so we can do it again for sure. That was mega, huh? Klaus, Absolutely. thank you very much. Thank and, you, Klaus. Uh, thank yeah. you to the Berlin Student Hotel for hosting us as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, some of Soviet's experience here. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you cool. very much. Thank awesome, you. dude. Much respect. Much respect. <laughs>